Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student and welcome to Ovi Med. So now that the semester is finally over and that summer is here, you know what that means? It's research time. So you're interested in doing research, you watched my video on how to get started in research during your undergrad or during medical school, you found a researcher, you send them an email with your CV and your grades and your nice letter, and now you got an interview. Congratulations, but now what? How can you prepare for that interview? Is it like a normal job interview? What kind of questions can they ask you? The answers to these questions and much more coming up. So one of the first things that surprised me is that the person who's gonna interview you is not necessarily like the lead researcher or the lab director or the uh, physician clinician researcher or whatever. It's often a graduate student working in that lab because the lab directors are really busy. So it makes sense that sometimes it's the graduate students and sometimes they're the same age as you are or just a bit older. So. Uh, the kind of dynamic is a bit different, but um, for the sake of this video, let's say that it's the lab director, it's the big boss who's interviewing you. So in this video, I'll be focusing on lab slash science research questions rather than personal questions. I'll be making other videos about personal questions such as like the questions that you get in MMIs in a future series that I will make about medical school interviews and MMIs so stay tuned for that but examples of personal questions are like tell me about a time that you struggled, tell me about a time where you disagreed with a superior, tell me about yourself, uh, what are your weaknesses and stuff like that. So I won't be focusing about these, I'm going to be focusing about the research slash science questions that you might get after you've applied for a research assistant or research job position and you get an interview. So I did dozens of interviews for research assistant positions and in this video I'll try to give you the most common science questions that you can get at these interviews. Now I wish I had known what kind of questions I could expect, I wish I had known what kind of topics they were even going to talk about because that way I could have prepared so much better and I could have gotten some positions that sadly I didn't get. So hopefully with this video, you will get that position that you want. All right, so as an undergraduate student, you're most probably applying for a research assistant position where you're gonna be helping out a master or a PhD student to write their thesis or uh, helping with an experiment within their bigger experiment. Now, if you're in medical school, the lab director might expect you to be more autonomous since you already have that research experience and background that you need to be able to lead your very own research project. Now, that's not always the case, but generally, they expect you to have more experience and be more knowledgeable about research. Now, if you want something shorter, you can ask if you can help with the writing of a manuscript or a paper or an article, whatever it is, or a presentation. Uh, and that way you don't have to do like a whole project from start to beginning because that's really hard, that's really time consuming, that's like something you need to spend the whole summer on, literally. So as you might know, there are two main axes of research. You have fundamental research and clinical research. And for each of these axes, the questions that you're gonna get are slightly different. Now the base is gonna be pretty similar, but the more focused, more advanced questions are gonna be different. Let me explain. If it's a clinical project, then it would be very helpful to have had some sort of experience in the past of patient contact. So whether it's through volunteering in a hospital or in a clinic, whatever you did, you need to show that you're able to communicate with a wide range of people from different backgrounds. Now, communication is also very important in a fundamental research project, but not in the same way, because in a clinical project, you're gonna be in direct contact with patients where they might be asking you questions about the project, and then you need to be able to explain the purpose of the project, what questions you're gonna be asking, why you're asking these questions, what you're gonna do with that information, basically answer whatever they want in order for them to be able to make an informed decision on whether they wanna consent or not, or whether they wanna participate or not in this study. So before you get started with the questions, there are two things, two mandatory things that you need to do. First of all, turn off your phone, mute it, throw it out the window, whatever you want to do. And second of all, dress nice. Don't dress to impress, but dress nicely. It's always better to overdress than to underdress, that's for sure. So now let's get started with the most common questions. Why do you want to do research? 
Well, I don't know. It's for my CV. Want to get into med school. So, yeah. So this needs to be a personal answer. You can't just give out a general answer like, yeah, well, I want to advance science and participate to innovation, blah, blah. Like, yeah, sure, but everyone's going to say that. Find something personal. You need to find something specific to you. If you never did any research before, well, just say that. I never did any research, but I'm really interested in this topic for ABC, and this is why I applied for this very project. If you have research experience, well, say that you have research experience and you want just to continue expanding your knowledge on whatever topic, blah, blah, things like that. Why does this research topic interest you? Well, I don't know. I found your email and I just sent you an email. Get out. So this, once again, is a very personal answer. You can say literally anything you want. So if it's a research project on cancer and oncology, for example, you can say that you found your immunology or oncology class super interesting and you were fascinated by the material and now you want to do some research in the project, you want to expand your knowledge in that field. And it also happens that someone in your family was affected by cancer and it's something that touches you personally more than it would touch someone else, for example, something like that. So at the end, you can add a personal twist, but you know, keep it short and relevant to the question. Why did you choose my lab and not another lab on a similar topic? Well, to be honest, I sent emails to quite a lot of researchers, you know, so yeah. What? So to answer this questions, well, only you know the answer. So you tell me, why did you write to that researcher? Why didn't you write to another lab? And if you did write to another lab, which one would you rather work in and why? This is your very personal answer. And once you get the answer to that, well, start looking at the other labs who are doing kind of similar stuff. And this is where you sort of pat them in the back by saying how much you find their techniques interesting and you've read their past publications and you find that really interesting because in other labs, they don't do this, but then they do this better, blah, 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 something like that. You can talk about a very specific experiment or a machine or a protocol that they have that you want to have experience in or that you find just interesting and you want to be able to collaborate. You know, find something really specific to that lab that is not found in other labs or that is found but is like in one other lab all the way across the world. So, you know. Talk to me about the most recent article you read on this topic. Uh, well, I don't read much, to be honest. So I would highly recommend to try to remember at least one or two papers, not the whole papers, but you know, at least the abstracts or the important points and the authors of the paper, because it shows that you're really interested in the topic and that you're willing to put the extra work or the, you know, the actual work that it takes to do research of going and reading online by your own on this topic. Now, I would also recommend to try looking at the lab's past papers or that professors, that physician, that lab's directors, past papers, or whatever members are in that lab. What are the articles that they publish? What are the presentations that they did on the axis that they're working on, on the project that they're working on? I think that would be really helpful and it can make you stand out. Now, most people won't actually be prepared to answer that question. I know I wasn't. The first time I got asked that, like, oh yeah, tell me about the two most recent papers you've read on the subject you're applying for right now. Uh, well, I don't know, I just, I wasn't ready to answer that. I answered, you know, about something that they wrote in the past on their past papers and it kind of went okay, it kind of like escaped the way, but it could have gone a lot worse. So then the following times I always read something, I always had a few notes ready about uh, a recent paper or a recent innovation in the field or something like that, that really makes you stand out. And that's something that they are going to remember because most people just don't expect to have that type of question. So hopefully you won't be making that same mistake because well, now you know. What research experience do you have? So I did some research as part of my undergraduate curriculum in the form of lab reports and some projects. 
I'm familiar with scientific papers and where to find them. I know how to find peer-reviewed articles and evidence-based articles. I never worked in a research lab per se because sadly I never had the opportunity due to my other commitments and I always had to work during my summers. Now though, I'm ready to commit to this project. I have read the literature, I have read your past publications, I have read on what your lab is doing, and with the skills I acquired through my college education, I believe that I possess the necessary skills, such as A, B, and C, to be a valuable member of your lab. Okay, why don't you tell me more about these A, B, C skills? Now, if you don't have any research experience, well, you can talk about your experience as working as part of a team in collaboration with other people. It doesn't have to be a science project. It can be literally anything like a team sport or something like that, where you have to be a leader, maybe a difficult situation where you had to like use collaboration and work with other people in order to resolve a problem because this basically is what research is, you know? And in terms of skills, well, think about your pre-med prereqs like biology, organic chemistry, whatever classes that you had that required you to learn a new technique, like in your labs, for example, if you had to do uh, to run PCRs, if you had to do agarose gels or uh, column chromatography, whatever it was, if these techniques, you're gonna reproduce them in the lab in this actual research project, well, that can be really helpful because it shows that although you don't have research experience, you do have a certain sort of skill set regarding the uh, manipulations and the protocol that you will be following in their lab. So that gives the researcher some sort of reassurance that um, you've seen a little bit, you have some experience at least. And I will also suggest to give an example where you were in a situation that you were unfamiliar with what you had to do and you had to learn very quickly how to solve that problem. I think that's extremely helpful because in research, Oftentimes you're going to be on your own. Yes, you're as part of a team, but oftentimes people are running their own experiments where at the end everything comes together. But often it happens that in some periods of time you're going to be alone for like a short period of time where you have to basically figure out what you have to do. You have to go and read online, search a paper, um, see why your gel didn't work or something like that, what's wrong with your column. You know, try to find something that you have to figure out. I think that shows that you're resilient and you're able to um, you know, be autonomous and find solutions to your own problems. So despite your lack of experience, if you do lack research experience, well, the lab director would rather choose someone who is eager to learn, uh, can be autonomous, learns fast, than someone who has tons of their research experience, but is like, well, I don't know. So, yeah. What is your plan for this research project? What? I thought you were gonna tell me what I need to do. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you're a medical student, you have had some research experience in the past, the lab director is gonna expect you to be a lot more autonomous than if you never did any research project ever. So in that case, set your expectations and talk, communicate with the lab director as early as possible to figure out a plan. So you can talk about any relevant experience, um, talk about maybe what your worries are about the project. Um, you can say that you, maybe you need a little bit of outline, you need a bit of coaching, you need a bit of that at the beginning, you know, just to get the ball rolling. Set the expectations right away. Don't let them think that, oh yeah, you know everything because that's just gonna backfire eventually when they're gonna ask you, oh, well, I thought you knew how to do this. So, you know, just tell them right away. So yeah, if you just need a bit of guidance, well, now is the time to let them know. If you don't feel 100% at ease with leading your own research project from start to finish. Now is the time to say it. Are you an ethical scientist? A what? Yeah? Yeah, sure. So I spoke about patients making informed decisions earlier in this video. Before doing any sort of research, you need to know the ethical guidelines and rules that you need to respect in order to do that research project, whether it's uh, on animals, whether it's fundamental, whether it's clinical. So you need to know these. Now, examples of ethical principles are beneficence. You must declare any conflict of interest. You must respect the patient's informed consent. That is very important. You must have integrity. So citing your sources, no plagiarism, and don't modify your data just to fit your hypothesis or whatever it is, because why would you ever do it? That's not having integrity 
And the last one is very important, respect of privacy and patient's confidentiality. So to answer these types of questions, well, you can show that you know these basic ethical principles by just naming them. And then you say that you understand them, you're aware, and you know how to apply them. That would most likely impress uh, the person who's interviewing you because they know that they can trust you uh, by respecting the ethical principles behind research. So towards the end of the interview, oftentimes the interviewer will let you ask them questions. So questions can be related to anything. They can be related to this specific research project, how the summer is gonna go, or literally anything. Now, I would recommend to pay attention to what types of questions you're gonna be asking. Make sure that you're not questioning their own knowledge about the topic because oftentimes that can go really, really wrong. And since this question period is towards the end of the interview, there are very high chances that they're gonna remember you by what types of questions you asked. So be careful about what kind of questions you ask as to not put them off. But now this question period is also the time where you, the student, is able to interview the researcher, the physician, or whoever you're talking to, to get to know more the lab, the project, or whatever you wanna know. Now, here's a few questions that I think you would need to have the answer to in order to have a better understanding of the lab. Now, obviously this depends on your need, but here is a quick list of questions that I think are important to ask. So, is this research internship paid? That's very personal. Can you afford to not get paid for a whole summer? Then, will I have a chance to get published? Could I attend some conferences on the topic? What type of supervision will I have during the project? Who will I be working with? Things like that. How do you describe the atmosphere in your lab? That's a very important question because for the researcher, it shows that you're looking forward to working as part of a team and you wanna know what people are like. So then you can ask, well, are the lab members close to one another or are they friendly with one another? You know, questions like that. Then you can ask, what types of team building activities does your lab do? Now, if they don't do anything, that's gonna be a bit awkward because they're gonna be like, uh, well, we don't do much. But at least it shows that, you know, you're a good team player and you wanna collaborate and stuff like that. And then last question, well, um, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the lab? You know, that's just returning the question that they asked you, um, the personal question. So, I mean, you can ask literally anything, just be careful to not question their own knowledge or the person's knowledge or the lab or don't put in question their whole like research experiment. Um, that could be really off-putting. That would be a bit, you know, dumb. But yeah, ask things that are of specific interest to you that you would like to know more about a specific technique or whatever. So I hope that this video was was helpful for you to prepare for your upcoming research interview. This can also apply for other types of interview, but I think that, you know, most of the people are only gonna apply this to research position interviews or research assistant interviews. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you won't be making the same mistakes that I did. As I mentioned earlier, I wish I had seen a video like that before. in order to be able to prepare better and to get these positions that I really wanted. Um, research assistant positions, you know, there are not many research assistant positions available. It's quite competitive to get some, especially as a student when you're basically a nobody. So by answering these questions as best as you can, I think that would be a great advantage for you at the interview. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't see my previous videos, I'm gonna link them right here. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can do so at ov.med and see you in the next video. Talk to me on the Talk to me about the boast. I am familiar with fine